Okay, so now that we can move things around our screen, it's time to get to the next piece of the puzzle, which is all about adding uh, physics to our programs. Now, obviously in video games, all we're doing is approximating because there's so many variables that affect the way that we or objects in our real world move. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on three of the major ones that are that are used in video games a lot. Things like gravity, friction, and wind. Now, gravity affects us by pulling things down to the ground. V friction is usually about ground friction. That's what we're going to stick with for this. Ground friction always stops us from uh, sliding across a surface of some kind by slowing us down. And wind is very similar to ground friction, except it basically happens in the air and can go in any direction. Okay, so... How are we going to start this? First of all, let's think about how we move our objects in our games. Our objects in our games are represented by some position, usually actually two positions, right? So our objects are moved with the following things. We have its, its draw position. Okay. We have its true position. And typically we have a speed. Now, because we move our because we move our uh, objects in both the x and y direction, we have to think about this speed in terms of a vector 2f. So really we have a speed x and a speed y. They operate independently of one another. Because if I'm running across the screen, that doesn't affect me moving up the screen. Those are two different things. Now, if I move in both directions simultaneously, I'm going to get a diagonal movement, but that's not what we're talking about here. Here we have just a speed that's represented in separately in both the x component as well as the y component. Okay, so we're going to think of this speed x and y. It's not a position, it is a uh, magnitude, a size, a, a scale of how fast we're moving in each component. Okay, so now that we know what we have here, how does this work? So our speed, speed is used, speed is used to update the position to update true position, I should say. And then the true position is used to update the draw position. Position, wow. Position, there we go. Pardon my handwriting. So it is used to update the draw position. Okay, so why does this matter? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a third dot right here that actually happens before all those. We're gonna have something is gonna be used to update the speed. Now you might be saying, what do you mean to update the speed? Well, imagine this for a second. All of our games, the way they are is you hit the key and the player just start, or the object just starts moving at a specific speed. And then that's how fast they move. And you know what? That's fine. A lot of games work like that. A lot of games, you hit the go button and it just goes at that speed. It just moves. That's fine. Other games, what they do is they'll do things like they'll accelerate up to the speed. Imagine sitting in a car and you hit the gas pedal. You're not instantaneously at 100 kilometers an hour. You have to accelerate up to that speed. So what we're going to use is we are going to use forces. Forces are used to update the speed. So now we have a three stage process. So we're going to use forces to update the speed and then the speed is going to update the true position and then the true position is going to update the draw position. And that's our goal. But how do these forces get applied to our speed? Now imagine for a second that you're, when you're not moving your speed is set at zero. Okay, so both in the X and Y direction, your speed is set in the zero. Now, how are we going to apply these forces? Well, each different type of force can act on one or both of these components of our speed. So, for example, gravity only pulls us down. So gravity is not going to affect the, affect the X component. It's only going to affect the Y component. So let's kind of draw a picture of what each one of these forces might look like. So gravity pulls us straight down. Okay. What about friction? Well, friction, we're thinking of ground, ground friction specifically here. So let's say ground friction. There's obviously other types of friction out there, but ground friction is a very interesting force. It, is, it always moves in the opposite direction that the object is moving in. So if your character is moving right, 
the ground friction moves in the opposite direction. Now, not necessarily as strongly, but it will move in the opposite direction. So it's pulling us backwards. Okay, so opposite. It's a P, I swear. Opposite of movement direction. Okay, so the opposite of movement direction. And then, of course, we have wind. Now, so this one, so this affects our Y component. This one affects our X component, unless you're on a hill. If you're on a hill, then it might affect both. But let's, let's just assume that it affects, um, it just affects our uh, X component right now, so horizontally. And then, of course, we have wind. Now, wind is an interesting one. So wind usually applies to us. Now, it, depends, it, it all depends on the kind of uh, object we're talking about and the medium that that object is, is uh, working in. So for example, if that object is under the water, say it's a submarine, for example, or a fish, obviously wind is not gonna come into play here. But if that, if that object is on top of the water and it's a boat, all of a sudden wind does come into play. Wind is gonna push it forward. Or push it backwards. If you are, if you're talking about a projectile flying through the air, a golf ball, a baseball, whatever it is, wind can play a factor on those objects and blow it forward to the side, and literally in any direction. So it can happen in the X and the Y components. So that was just some amazing handwriting. So it can happen in both of the X and Y components in any direction. We're gonna try and keep things simple. We're gonna start off with gravity. So let's pretend for a second that we are um, throwing a baseball. And the way, that we th the way that we visualize us, let's imagine that this is the ground for a second. And imagine that we're throwing a baseball from the ground. Or let's say we're hitting a golf ball, so it's hitting directly from the ground. And the way that we visualize this is we draw a vector. Now, you remember this term vector, we've talked about it before. In programming terms, vector always meant just like a coordinate to us. So it might be like an X and Y coordinate, right? So if we have our screen and our screen is located, our top of our origin is at zero, zero, and we put it something way over here, let's say that is at 100 um, and 10 down. So it's 100 pixels over and so many curves there, 100 pixels over and 10 down. What that really means is that it's a vector. It is actually a distance from the origin. And this 110 just makes up the X and Y components of that distance. So it moves over uh, in the X direction by 100 and moves down in the Y direction by 10. So this is what's called a vector. Now in math terms and science terms, physics, um, this vector represents two things. It, a vector represents a direction and a magnitude. Now, what do you mean? What do I mean by that? So, a lot of times in our games, we're going to consider magnitude like our speed. Okay. Now, what do I mean by magnitude? So, for example, let's say this direction is based on its angle. Let's say this is 45 degrees. Okay. Now, if this thing has a length of say five. That's its magnitude. So its direction is 45 and its magnitude is five. But I can still have the same direction, but a bigger magnitude. So for example, it might be this long. Then all of a sudden that magnitude might be eight from the, from the bottom up to the top. So the magnitude is just the size and, and, we, and we show that size by the different size of the actual vector line. So let me go back for a second. So why does this matter? So this is called a vector. Well, because we use what's called vector addition to get our final speed. So if this is our speed, so if this vector represents our speed or our velocity, as it were, a velocity is really a speed in a direction. I'm moving 50 kilometers an hour northeast, right? So that means 50 kilometers an hour north and east. So that means in that direction at a speed of 50. So that tells us both a direction and a speed, right? So it's the same thing that we're talking about here in our games. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that magnitude and we are going to add to it the other possible forces that are existing. Let's start with the simple one or the most, the most obvious one, which is gravity. Now gravity is gonna move at a certain amount uh, over a period of time. Now, depending on what this five represents, maybe this five represents um, five pixels per update. 
So that means our character is going to move in that direction a total of five pixels per update. So after two updates, it would be here and then here another five, right? So it would be, it would be a total of 10 and then 15 and then 20. But with gravity coming into play, well, that's not going to be the same anymore because what gravity is going to do is it's going to pull that arrow down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the force of gravity. We're going to start it at the tip of the vector. We're going to draw it down. Now, gravity in one update is not going to affect it that much. Right? Gravity in one up. Let me use a different color. Gravity in one update is not going to affect it that much. Because gravity works at a certain amount um, and is basically uh, changing the speed. It's accelerating or decelerating the speed by a certain amount each update. Now watch what happens. The way that we add these vectors is we draw the first vector and then we take the second vector and we just draw it starting at the end and then adding the vector itself on. So here's our gravity. We started at the tip of the first vector and drew, drew the vector. Now the solution to our vector, the actual vector that we're going to be moving in, starts at the very beginning, and we just draw this line to the tip of the gravity vector. So this, this second line, this bottom line here, is the actual movement that we're going to be doing. That is actually how we're going to be moving. Not this first one. You might be like, well, I don't understand. Well, let's imagine that this flows out. If this were to continue, it would stay on this straight line right it would just keep going forever but because gravity happens every single update after a little bit gravity gets applied again so now the line comes over here and then it would come along this path but after a certain amount gravity applies again so we can see it come here you can start to see what's happening here gravity applies again what's happening is our curve we're getting a parabola just like you would expect a real object to move in. And eventually, what you can see here is that gravity is overcoming that original speed. That original speed. So what? which original speed? Because remember, this speed is the actual uh, hypotenuse here. It's the full magnitude. But what gravity is affecting is only the y, mag the, only the y component. So if I draw this, we broke this down and do the math, we have an x component and a y component of that original speed. Well, gravity is only affecting the y component. Remember, we represent our speed as x and y. So this x here is this x down here. This y here is this y right here. And what we're saying is every single update, take the y of the speed and change it by gravity. And we just did step one. Forces are used to update the speed. So we update the speed by the given force's value. Now, if every force is a measure in both components x and y, that means that the gravity would have an x component of zero and a y component of whatever we want it to be. Maybe it's, since it's 9.8 meters per second squared, maybe it's something like 9.8 divided by 60 since we rock at 50 or 60 frames per second, right? It can be whatever you want. We're gonna show you that in a demo in a second. But that's basically how this works. So we add each component. Now, you're seeing how to add vectors here. We basically just add piece to piece to piece. So if we started adding things in like wind, so let's say our original vector was like this, and then we add in gravity with the, with the blue. So we add in gravity right here, and maybe wind comes in, and wind is moving in the right direction. So wind comes over here. You notice how we're always drawing it from the tip to, from the, tip to the end? And then the final actual movement would be from the original start to the final end. And you can see that's how we would actually be moving at the end after all the vectors would be applied. You might be like, well, that's great graphic. That's great to show me a diagram, Mr. Lane, but how do we actually do that in code? Well, in code, we just add each component to each component. So what I mean by that is we take the speed X and we add it to the gravity X and we add it to the wind X. We take the speed y and we add it to the gravity y and we add it to the wind y and all of a sudden you're ended you're ending with your final vector so you always add the same components to each other you're not adding any you're not mixing up your components in any way shape or form and what you're going to see in the upcoming videos is how we can apply this both to do simple things like acceleration deceleration as well as uh, getting our characters to jump around and uh, across the screens and whatnot so that's where we're going to start off with today so that's the end of the first video 
Uh, let's move on to the next one now. <laughs> 